Yo, what's good, YouTube man? It's Gabriel Jones Fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. Listen, we're gonna do this Ravens versus Saints game preview. Once again, it's just me, but you guys are used to that. Um, so you know, real life happens. So you know, the guys uh, they, they we couldn't make it this week, but we're gonna try to do the game preview all together next week, and hopefully that comes together. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. Um, so first off, we want to start off with the injury report because that's big going into the game. We got to know who's playing and who's not. Um, so let's start with the Ravens side. Out, Rashad Bateman. Doubtful, Mark Andrews. Gus Edwards. Uh, questionable, Malik Harrison. But it looks like he probably will play. Um, Marcus Peters was a full participant on Saturday. So I'm assuming he will play on Monday. Uh, Demarcus Robinson popped up on the injury report on Friday. Then he didn't practice on Saturday. So it's looking like an injured Ravens receiving core is going to be down another receiver. Uh, so players with no injury destination going into the game. Tyus Bowser, Josh Bynes, Marlon Humphrey, David Ojabo, Jason Pierre-Paul, Ronnie Stanley. Now, I expect all of these guys to play except for David Ojabo. I think they still hold Ojabo out for another week or two just to get so he can get fully acclimated and ramped up. You know, just because he's healthy doesn't mean he's in game shape. So, so still two totally different things. We saw a similar thing happen with Ronnie Stanley. Like, Ronnie Stanley was healthy. Ravens still waited a couple of weeks to put him back out there on the field. All right. Now, as far as the Saints, the Saints, the big news is uh, all pro cornerback Marshawn Lattimore is out. That's 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 the really, really big news. Uh, Mark Ingram is also out. So, it'll just be a lot of Alvin Kamara, which is probably no problem for the Saints at all. <clears throat> so, excuse me, um, questionable Jarvis Landry, but the Saints head coach, uh, Dennis Allen, was saying Landry's getting better each and every day. So, I'm assuming Landry will play on Monday. Uh, so, guys with no injury designation that are important to the Saints, Ryan Ramchek, Eric McCoy, two offensive linemen. So, you know, the Saints don't give up a lot of sacks, so we'll talk about that. But So, they need, they need the offensive linemen, so they got two key guys uh, that's going to play. And uh, defensive lineman, David Amietta. All right. And one more person I want to mention for the Saints is Michael Thomas officially went on IR, I believe, earlier this week. So, I mean, he didn't play a lot this season at all anyway. He might have played three games. But it's still a guy that was a, is a big-time weapon that Saints won't have at their disposal. So, I just wanted to mention that Michael Thomas is on IR, okay? So, let's get into the game preview, man. Let's talk about it, all right? Let's talk about the Saints' uh, passing offense. They are ranked... Uh, eighth in yards per game, so 253 yards a game, and their 35 attempts a game is 16th in the NFL, so dead middle. So they pass the ball dead middle amount of times, but they get good yardage off of those pass plays because they got guys like a Chris Olave, um, who's a field stretcher and a burner. You got Alvin Kamara, who's you know can do, to take a five yard pass and take turn it into forty. So they got guys that can stretch the field and make big plays. So even though the passing attempts not might not be high. Or just middle of the pack, they can still get a lot of yards off of that. All right. Let's talk about their run offense. So uh they're 28, so they had they average 28 attempts a game, which is 10th in the NFL, and they average 141 yards a game, which is eighth in the NFL. So we're gonna see a steady dose of this running game. I I, I really truly believe that. Whether that's Taysom Hill coming downhill, whether that's uh obviously Alvin Kamara, as we mentioned before. Um, so the Saints are gonna run this ball. Right now, the Ravens have done a pretty decent job against the run. Now, obviously, the Buccaneers aren't a great running team. They use kind of their short passing game as a run as a running game. But Ravens did pretty good against them, for the most part. They did pretty good against Nick Chubb. There was that one drive in the fourth quarter where Nick Chubb and Brad Brown's the offensive line did whatever they wanted to the Ravens. But outside of that, Nick Chubb didn't have a great game. Obviously, you know you can't just take out one thing in the game. But outside of that, Nick Chubb didn't have a great game. All right, so. If I'm looking at it, the Ravens over these last couple of weeks are doing a good job at stopping the run. So that's strength on strength right there. Can the Ravens continue that? I think they can. Now that kind of leads to Roquan Smith, right, in the middle of the park. How much will he play? I'm very interested in seeing that. He's been practicing all week. Yeah, it's not like he came over here and they sat him down. No, nah, he's been practicing all week. So we'll see how much he plays because a guy like Josh Bynes is back, right? If John Spines is healthy, does he get to start just so the, the defense has some continuity out there? It's things, it's questions like that I'm interested in seeing, okay? Now, um, we got to talk about the quarterback. So, Andy Dalton has been the quarterback for the Saints for at least five games. Could be longer than that. Uh, James Winston got hurt and hasn't gotten a job back, right? So, I want to talk about these last three games for Andy Dalton, all right? So, 
Well, first, I start off with the season. 65% completion percentage, which is which is pretty good, all right? So, Andy Dalton is getting the ball out of his hands quick. Uh, the Saints only give up two sacks a game, which is around eighth in the NFL. So, the offensive line is playing well, and he's getting the ball out of his hands quick. So, if the Ravens is kind of the same game plan for the Bengals, same game plan for the Buccaneers, defensive line needs to get their hands up in the pass lane and pass some of these quick passes down, all right? So, his last three games, he had a... a a game versus Cincinnati that was in the dome in uh, in New Orleans, 17 for 32, 162, one touchdown, no picks. Didn't play particularly well that game, uh, just from what I've seen, things like that. It wasn't a really good game for him. I know on the other side, of, on the other side of the ball, Jamar Chase had an amazing game for the Bengals in that one. All right. Um, then the Arizona game, uh, Thursday night football, 30 for 47, 361, four touchdowns, three picks. Andy Dalton really played well this game. The three picks don't tell the story. That's why it's kind of hard always just reading the stats. I watched that whole Thursday night game. He had at least two of these three picks were tip passes that he put on the money receiver dropped. It really wasn't his fault. It's nothing he could do about it. All right. Then we look at it, 361, uh, 30 for 47. Not bad. Not bad. All right. So Andy Dalton is not playing terrible. So now we get to the Oakland game. The Oakland game, they just came off the win 24-0 versus the Raiders. We know the Raiders are struggling, so that's not that's not really saying anything. But it's the fact that the Saints are coming off their best, probably, game as a team, right? Offense scores 24, the defense gives up zero. Andy Dalton is 22 for 30, 229, two touchdowns, no picks. A really solid, clean game from the Saints offense. So that's what they're coming off of. They have confidence saying that, okay, look, that's how we know we can play. Let's play like that on Monday versus the Ravens. So the Ravens got to be, they got to be worried about that, all right? And um, we got to talk about that. Andy Dalton is obviously ex Bengal. He has familiarity with the Ravens. But obviously, this is a different Ravens defense in ways. Now, Mike McDonald, um, he grew up in the Raven way. All right. So, you know, you know Wink Martindale and, and, you know, Dean Pease, whatever, he comes from guys like that. But what I will say about McDonald is he's an adjuster. And we've seen the last couple of weeks. The Bucks and, and the Browns both got off to quick 10 0 leads. And it was like, yo, what is the defense doing? But after that, the defense kind of clamped up. To me, that's a coaching adjustment, right? The players are making adjustments as well, but it's also a coordinator adjustment. So Mike McDonald is showing me that he can adjust, right? He sees something not working, he can fix it. He's going to have to do that versus uh, the Saints as well, all right? That's got to continue. Um, uh, we talked about Kamara, Chris Olave. Um, oh, Taysom Hill. The Taysom Hill package. The Ravens have to be prepared for that. Um... He scored three touchdowns versus Seattle three weeks ago, I believe, three, four weeks ago. So they can't let that happen. <laughs> All right. Um, when he's in the game, everybody's got to be queued up and ready to, ready to stop it. Obviously, they will throw it sometimes with him, but they got to be ready to stop the run first and foremost when he's in the game. All right. So let's go to this Ravens offense versus the Saints defense. So now this Saints uh, defense Gives up 208 yards a game passing, which is 12th in the NFL, so pretty good. And um, their run defense, they give up 112 yards a game, which is 14th in the NFL. So they're kind of close to the middle of the pack in both areas. Now, the pass defense being 12th, I'm going to take with a little bit of an asterisk just because, like we mentioned, all pro cornerback Marshall Lattimore is out, all right? And when you have a guy that can lock down the side of a field, you have a guy that quarterbacks don't want to throw his way, that changes the entire passing offense. Now that that guy's not out there, um, the Ravens can feel more comfortable and confident throwing the football. Now, the Ravens are still going to run the hell out of the ball. We know that. We know what Greg Roman does. We know what he uh, likes to do. Now, that second, half, that second half versus Tampa Bay, we keep mentioning it. I hope it's not a flash in the pan thing. I hope it's not a, uh, this is what happened one time and we don't see it duplicated, right? It, I say that because we look at the, the Bengals game. Right? We saw Duvernay get a lot of touches. A lot of touches that was manufactured for him. He's lot up in the backfield, jet sweep screens, whatever. All right. Uh, even shot plays that you know him and Lamar couldn't connect on, but you know, the shot was taken. Um, then we go to the next couple of weeks, he's not involved in the game plan at all. Right. So then we got the Bucks game, second half, we see more of the playmakers getting the ball in their hands, more plays being designed and drawn up just for them. Right. Now we have to see some more of that versus the Saints. I need consistency from the play call and consistency from the players. They have to go hand in hand. Okay. Um, now, Mark Andrews is doubtful, right? So can Isaiah likely step up again, right? 
And to me, we got to talk about X factors. The X factors of this game is going to be the Ravens wide receivers as a whole. Right now, if you want to pick up one guy, maybe you could say Deshaun Jackson, because I assume with these injuries, Deshaun Jackson is probably going to have to play. Right. So if you want to point out one single X factor, Deshaun Jackson. But as a whole, this Ravens offense, this Ravens wide receiver, of course, excuse me, um, has to be able to make plays on Monday night. It, it just has to happen. OK, you know, quote unquote, the Ravens trusted their young guys from this is from training camp in the summer. They said that. Well, proven to put it now. So it's time to put that out there on the field. The Ravens have a potential of going out there right now with, the, with, with no roster elevations of James Poche, Tylen Wallace, Devin Duvernay. All right, that's that's the possibility right now. Okay, now I and Sean Jackson, I expect to see Deshaun Jackson elevated. Um, and my guy Sam in the comments, you know, he he mentioned Benjamin Victor. I would love to see Benjamin Victor get a chance. Benjamin Victor, um, excuse me, Benjamin Victor, excuse me, big body guy, six three, six four. Um, close to two, probably a little bit over 200 pounds, knows how to use his frame well. He's never gotten a shot in the regular season for the Ravens. Never. Um, so I will be interested to see how he does because he, he does well in training camp and he does pretty well in the preseason games. All right. Never really lights it on fire, but it does pretty well. So now this guy's been a Ravens for a couple years. He trains with Lamar Jackson in the offseason, like outside of just, you know, being on the Ravens. All right. So it's like, does he get a shot? I don't know. Then you got Andy Isabella, who's been um, just on the practice squad for, what, two weeks now, maybe? Some three weeks? Well, he get the call up, right? The Ravens have to call up one of these guys to receive it because obviously they're not signing anybody to, uh, today to play tomorrow. It's just not happening like that. So that's my big thing. Who are the Ravens going to sign? Who are they going to pick up that's going to help elevate this passing offense? Because that's what's going to have to happen, right? Um, now, as far as getting guys open... That's part of the scheme, right? You got to be able to have create match mismatches and create uh, concepts that gets guys open. You know, rub routes, pick routes, anything, bunch formations so they can't really get pressed like that, compressed sets. They have to do different things to get these guys open. They have to throw a lot at the Saints, all right? But at the same time, the Ravens have to be consistent. They have to get, I, in my personal opinion, the Ravens just try to spread out the field how they did partly versus the Buccaneers, right? You still have your heavy run game. You can still have a car in the game at times. I'm not saying that he's a big part of the offense, whether we like it or not. I have no problem with Patrick Ricard. Um, so with that being said, it just has to be a more of a balance to the game, right? Um, so that's what I'm looking for for this Ravens versus the Saints game, all right? The Ravens can win this game. The Ravens should win this game, uh, if I'm being quite honest, right? The Saints are not a bad team. When the, when the season first started, People kind of saw this Buccaneers decline kind of coming. It was some hints that this could happen. And the Saints was right there at, every, at a lot of people's picks to win that division. Now, it didn't go their way. They started off slow for whatever reason. But they're coming off their best win of the season versus the Oakland Raiders. So they're going to be prepared, ready to go. I think it's still going to be a close game. I don't think it's going to be any kind of blowout. So we are, I am going to get my prediction because I've got to do that last time. So um, I am going to go Ravens to win. Right. And I'm going to go. Um, I'm thinking like 27, 21. So Ravens, 27, Saints, 21 in a very, very good Monday night football game. I don't think it's going to be a blow in any form or fashion. And um, but hopefully I'm wrong on that on the Ravens side. And they do blow them out. But Saints are Saints are a good team. They have players that are top players in this league. Cameron Joy, I didn't even mention him. Um, you know, Demario Davis, you know, so Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave is a really good young receiver. You know, they have talent. So I don't think the Ravens are just going to walk over them. But this Ravens offense has to have big plays from uh, King and Drake and Isaiah Lightfoot, Devin DuVernay. So it's going to be a nice back and forth, man. Who, what side can step up the most, right? Um, so that's my Ravens versus Saints game preview. Uh, give me your thoughts, predictions in the comments, and we'll talk about it there, man. It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. Oh.